Hello and welcome back to the back office. You can see my TI-99 project is still on the go. You will be aware that uh, I did replace the CPU and put SIP headers in right here, but unfortunately that didn't fix the problem. I was looking around the board though, and I did find some gunk under this chip, um, which I suspect is some sort of um, logic chip, like an AND gate or something. And I noticed there was some gunk on a couple of pins here, and you can see there's not much pins there, they actually evaporated. But there is a trace that runs through them, so I want to make sure it's it's still alive. I don't think, oh no, yeah, I don't think there was any other trace going to that pin. It wasn't as if this one's branching off or anything, this was just going straight through is my gut feeling. So I just want to make sure that is still alive, so I can put a socket in and then make that a socketable chip and buzzing from there to there ooh, it is not still alive so that is a problem and it's coming f should be going to that leg of that chip so I'm going to probably put some kynar but I might have a little experiment see if we can clean this up and actually just put kynar across there underneath the socket I'm gonna fit a socket here like anything on these boards if you remove it fit it back in a socket uh, the main reason being TI do this bloody awful thing of bending the IC pins. You can see they're splayed out. It's almost designed to ruin your PCB pulling these things out when they're at that angle. I mean, we can clean those up and get those into a socket, no problem, but definitely do not solder them back in directly. Just going to clean it with a fiberglass pen here. And I'm not expecting miracles. <laughs> But it will be nice to see what's underneath there. But I'm just going to give this a little trim. It's, it's grown. It's grown a little bit of a, a funny haircut there. Probably do it off camera though, not to get detritus all over my relatively clean TI PCB. Short back and sides complete. Don't go too wild on this, by the way. You want to create potential places to bridge. I might start to look though for a material that would be good as a solder resist, like a varnish. Yeah, so I can see that it, it goes through almost and then it dies basically. You might just about see that shininess where there is actually some metal left. Mainly it appears to be rust. So if we can get in just behind this bus bar, this white bus bar here, we could potentially put a tiny bit of kinar or a leg of a lead. So let's get that a brush. And I'm going to put the tiniest drop of flux on it from my dirty flux pen. Let's see if we can tin it. If we can tin it, we can do it here. If not, we'll just jump it elsewhere. But it's always worth having a go, isn't it? I've got my leaded solder here. Oh, that was good. Oh, have we? I think we, I think we almost have, you know. I reckon. I'm just going to scrape gently with the soldering iron. I reckon we got this. We definitely have got this. So you can see now, you've got two ends. And what I've got here is a massive. It's quite heavy actually. This is a pot of legs from things. So when you're making things you always end up, I'll show you, a big ball of leads. That gives you an idea probably of how much stuff I uh, I make when I'm messing around and that's probably just since January alone, <laughs> that pot. I don't keep everything, I have to chuck it out from time to time. So I'm just going to take a piece of this wire and I'm going to trim it down to about nine mil I would say that's in metric of course metric right let's zoom back in because you're not going to be able to see anything first I'm going to attempt to tack it in without any sol solder additional solder I should say the problem is with things like this it doesn't matter which end you heat up because if you heat up one the other end will come off so I'm just going to push it now. That is pretty good actually. That's looking really good. 
I'm just gonna add a little bit of solder to this bus bar end because it's a tiny bit dry. And we've got the benefit, it, it kind of offsets slightly. Oh, that looks quite good. It's got a little bit of a dollop going on. I think I'm gonna to try to do a dollop on that end too. Looking nice. So if electrically it makes sense, that could make all the difference. I never really appreciated that I was, there we go. That I was gonna spend so many years of my life trying to fix this machine. It's not, but that's fine. Okay, while we're here, let's uh, do the whole shebang and fit a socket. So I have bags now of every component one of these needs, all the critical components. So if you need something, look me up. I might start putting them on eBay. Or I'll become the guy who fixes TI-99. I'm not sure I want that. That's becoming too... Uh, That'd be too stressful for me. Can you imagine fixing somebody else's TI-99? Now, that looks like it's going to be fine. I mean, from a from the perspective of fitting the socket, that's going to be fine. But I'd be very cautious about how much solder I add. So don't go nuts with the solder on those last ones because you want don't want the solder to flow through the top and then potentially short those out. Now, this socket is a bit long, <laughs> I just realised. So what I'm going to do, if you've got a socket that's too long, do not worry, you've got lots of options here. My option, or well, my suggestion, would be, if you look here, you can see it will still fit, even with that diode there. So what you could do, is I'm going to bend that diode slightly, because we already adjusted it. Oh, there you go, get a better view. Um, we already adjusted that diode. Be very careful, it is glass. There we go, that's it. That was all it needed, just a little shove. And then just remove a couple of the pins. I'm going to try it with these tweezers. I think they probably won't do the job. No. Um, these pins often release themselves when you don't want them to. So it shouldn't be too difficult to take them out when you do. But you might just need something tiny that's going to go in there like a, like a pin that you'd use for haberdashery. <laughs> like, there you go, see? These tweezers have a little hand on the end, so that's how they can grab it. They've got a very little hand, which is kind of cool, kind of neat. If you're looking in for some, by the way, they're the SM116 style end with a little grabby hand for surface mount work. Um, I don't know if they're all made equal because the last lot I bought, the little grabby hands, this is the brand new one, to replace these ones actually broke and I ended up having just to sand it down to something that I could use, so yeah. I don't know, maybe they've made them cheaper, but that's fine. So we can pop this in now. So you'll see there's a blank section, but you're not worried about that because you're never gonna solder, well, you don't have anything to worry about on the soldering side. And when you fit your IC, you just shunt it up to the ones which do have metal contacts in it. Now it looks like here I actually have a hole that's a bit obscured because you can see this component actually just wedged out push that back in, little contact. That's not good when that happens. So I'm gonna to have to flip the board and just make sure it's clean underneath. You appear to have a stealth blockage. Let's get rid of that. So watch out for your stealth blockages. They'll do you no good. Mmm, clean. You can't get better than that. Oh, that's a lovely fit. See, it fit quite nicely. Let's keep that pushed down there. Keep some pressure on the thing when you flip it over. Let's have a look. All the pins look like they're coming through at a de decent height, equal height as well. I've got my little bit of solder, of course, because I'm putting pressure on it with my index finger. So I can't really let go and get an extra hand to do the soldering, but that's okay because we can just tack a couple of opposite ends in like that and then that's going to hold that enough for us to work our way through and remember we're, we're not going to go nuts with the solder we're just making sure there's a decent contact but without over wetting it because we don't want solder to flow through into our freshly prepared link especially now that that link exists underneath this holder <laughs> where we're going to have trouble getting to it 
to fix it up. And I do not think these PCBs will take too much desolderings. Okay, so we are ready to test again. Before we put anything back in, I'm going to just probe out our repair, which went from here to here. It still works. And then I'm going to check it against its neighbours here and here. See, that's absolutely fine. And there it is in there. There it is in there. And it's not accidentally going to the ground plane either. So we're ready to sort out this chip. Now I'm going to do that. Is I'm going to take my tweezers, which have this area here, and I'm going to use them as a clamp, give it a bit of a squeeze and a bend, and that's to straighten out all those little dog legs on this IC that the TI team have put in. So that's all pretty square now. Let's put it in. Remember we're shunting it all the way to the correct end, so that's fine. You'll always see, if you pull out the pins, you'll never get confused because you'll always know that that's useless the moment of truth. All right guys, I know we've been here before, so I'm very apprehensive as what the result will be, but we'll share it together. Um, if you recall, when we turn it on, it says press any key, and that's normally where we get to. Um, we don't be on that, go beyond that, so I'm almost scared to do it because I'm out of ideas on this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna persevere anymore. As I said, it's been two years. So let's plug it in. TI screen is running, that's good. Let me turn off the light, maybe you can see that better. And it says, ready, press any key to begin. Ooh, let's press the any key. Whoa, the any key worked. Now it says, press one for TI basic. So I'm gonna press six. No, four, three, two, one. Oh, well, it, oh, there you go, TI basic ready. Oh my gosh. To say I'm emotional is an understatement. This has been a absolute nightmare for me. Absolute. But now, just now, I can actually do another video on this, which is the actual proper video on this, where it's the, about the power supply I made. And the funny thing is, I've gone through the box and I can't even find that power supply anymore, so I'm going to have to recreate that whole project again. But I'm happy to do it because we've got so much more progress now than we've made over the last couple of years. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and as an aside, I was talking to people about this because you might... Oops. That's this crashing because something's got hot. Yeah, that's the memory chips are getting warm. It's not got the proper heat sinks on it. I will sort that out, don't worry. That's something else I can deal with. Um, I was saying this to someone else because the uh, Famicom, if you remember the Famicom uh, unit I had, the Nintendo Famicom, I wanted to show you the disk drive emulator and even just to get that working, I ended up having to make a whole PCB to get it working. And I still haven't showed you that. So it's a bit like this. We've done all the work and we still haven't shown the final product. I haven't shown you the RetroNet V4, I haven't shown you the Famicom, and I haven't shown you my TI hack and slash power supply. So stay tuned for all of that coming up. I do apologize, I've not brought there sooner. But as ever, thank you for watching.